What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to the World Cup. Yes, this is episode number 143 of Park to Prem here with England. We are in South Korea and just to give you a taster of what's to come today, we are going to have the first knockout round of the World Cup that we will be participating in. Yes, ultimately I decided that the group stage wasn't the most interesting of groups. We'll talk more about it shortly, but yeah, we are here for the World Cup. I want to cover this in two to three episodes if we get knocked out today. It will, it will be just one episode and it'll be a little bit awkward. But hopefully we're going to get it, get one over on Australia. That's got to be the aim. Of course, we have played a lot of football since the last international episode, which was way back last summer. Ultimately, we cruised through the World Cup qualifiers. Um, you can see if we just take a quick peek at our group here. We lost one game. It was away from home against Austria. Three goals conceded in ten games. It, it doesn't get much easier than that, I suppose. So, yeah, we, we made it to the World Cup. Spoilers. Uh, and we also navigated our group, which we'll talk about shortly. But I think, firstly, we should have a little look at the squad for the World Cup. Because there's a few faces you'll recognise here, I'm sure. Um, a few real footballers having their twilight years of their career. Um, they are actually highlighted in orange because they're part of my shortlist of real wonder kids at the start of the game. And funnily enough, a few of the wonder kids at the start of the game made it into the England national team. So, this is the team that are disposal. A few Tower players in and amongst these. Dylan Turnbull of course up top for us worth noting Dylan Turnbull as well if we just look other, other nationalities Australia oh spicy this could this could this could be a feisty game with him up top 20 aggression taking on the nation he could have elected to play for had it not been for me calling him up for the England squad early alongside him Steve Norman the only other English player in the Tower or town squad in terms of the English national team. At 20 years old, he had a pretty good start to his career at international level, and while playing at a World Cup for a young player, turns out to be quite good for their development. He is having an absolute whale of a time, now valued at £65 million. In terms of the rest of the team, just to highlight a few of the, the big names, I suppose, Manchester United goalkeeper Alvin John is in goal. He's not the world's craziest goalkeeper, but he's a very solid keeper for us. He has got 30 caps already. In the defence, one of the big players is Declan Rice, the most capped player in England history. Yes, 173 caps he has. He's 35 years old. And to be fair, he's still got a lot in the locker and a lot in the tank to offer us uh, as far as 35-year-olds go. Doesn't start nearly as many games as he did once upon a time, but he is the England national team captain and he probably deserves to be England national team captain. He really is a top, top player for us. In terms of at the back, Ryan Lemmer is kind of my child, my boy. This man who we found on the streets of Arsenal. Um, he was not capped when we joined the club. In fact, he wasn't even playing for Arsenal's first team regularly. Um, the season that we brought him in, I believe he had only made five appearances or something. It was crazy how few appearances he had had. Over the last couple of years, he's broken into the Arsenal national team. You can see him now. and uh, I, I mean Arsenal first team. Arsenal aren't a nation, everyone. J just just to clarify that but um, considering the situation we had at centre-back we didn't have any good defenders I do feel like Lemmer here has been one of the big revelations shall we say underneath my England leadership and expect to see a little bit of him over the next couple of episodes a left-back Ryan Fryer player who we're a little familiar with he's been a, a constant fawn in our side of course playing for Chelsea a player who scored the odd goal against us here and there and he's a very very good attacking option of course with the England national team we don't play our wing-back system we we do play the old-fashioned Tau Law 4-4-2 and in this system he is more than adequate as kind of the left wing back option for us. A right back, another position where we don't really have the best of strengths. Chris Turner here is a player who I've started to bed into the first team a little bit more at 21 years old again. He has been the answer I suppose to Alexander-Arnold falling off a cliff and maybe falling off a cliff is a tad harsh but when you look at Alexander-Arnold's physicals they are not the same as they were two years ago when we were first England manager just this year he made the move to Norwich City and with his lack of pace and his lack of physical ability in truth I feel like he's just best suited to being a more centre mid option although his versatility is certainly useful in a competition like the World Cup where fixtures are coming at you thick and fast. Anyway another Chelsea player alongside Fry is Greg Watson he is the Chelsea key player and for us he is one of our big key players of course we play with a deep line playmaker and as far as deep line playmakers go you don't get much better than our Greg here. 
The centre mid position though is pretty stacked. We have players like Jude Bellingham, who of course can play centre mid, can play out on the right. You can see here he is only 31 years old. He's not actually as old as you might expect him to be, uh, but a star player for Real Madrid, a really versatile option. I just the issue with Jude Bellingham is he's kind of the jack of all trades, master of none. I have throughout this World Cup played him out on the right hand side, but of course out on the right hand side is one of our best talents, Ashley Walker. Um, I have. Since I've come to England, we have played him as the inside winger, or rather inverted winger, on the right or on the left. He is Manchester City's star attacking man alongside Mike Frost. And uh, despite not playing his natural striking position, you can just see as far as inverted wingers go, even if he is cutting on to his slightly weaker foot... He's very, very good. 91 goals, which I believe is an England record. Don't quote me on that. 91 goals. I'm pretty sure that is the England international record, which I think speaks volumes to how good Walker is and why someone like Jude Bellingham doesn't find themselves in the team. Anyway, alongside a lot of other players we've bring it, been bringing through, Graham Gleed is another, um, a player who we recently gave a chance in the England team. And to be fair, he's done very, very well. Not sure if he's going to start today. He recently made a move for £82 million to Liverpool from Tottenham. I'll be honest, as town or town manager, if I'd realised that this guy was going for that kind of money, might have been tempted to give him a, a bid at that price. He's only 23, he's still pretty young, had his birthday just yesterday, we didn't have a cake, we didn't do anything too exciting, um, a short game of past the parcel where there was a scented candle in the middle, and that, that was his birthday evening. Because we needed to be at full strength for today's game, and while the player who probably is going to come in to replace him is going to be Ali Hall. I really like this guy, 27 years old. Um, you can see plays for PSG at club level, more of a centre-attacking mid, but you can see how him and Gleed are fairly similar players, um, as you will come to see when we're doing a bit of a catch-up. Hall... Very, very good and has put in some good performances at this World Cup, which I suppose is one of the reasons for wanting to bring him in. Of course, out on the left-hand side, Jaden Sancho. There's there's a name we all recognise, right? The, the Dortmund youngster at 34 years old. He made a move to Juventus recently. I was really impressed by how well his physicals were maintaining themselves. And then in the last year, they've completely fallen off to the point where... <laughs> It's difficult to think he'll be in the England team much longer after this international competition. When you look at the likes of Sancho, the likes of Trent, um, also Rice, they're all 34, 35. They're probably not going to be around for the next European Championship in two years and certainly not going to be around for the next World Cup. Um, and I suppose Phil Foden falls into a not dissimilar branch there. At 34 years old, he's, as you can see here, finally leaving Man City to join Juventus on a free transfer a great player on his day, but just with the physicals tailing off and as someone who really likes to have quick players to hit teams on the break, doesn't quite find himself in the first team contention like he did once upon a time. In the striking department, obviously we've got Walker. The other options we've got are Wolverden, who is a recent addition to the England team, hasn't had the best goal-scoring record since we've started calling him up over the last couple of years for Manchester United. He has reached double figures. Um, he was one of the players who was very close to not making the squad, but he has in the end. And another player who is joining us, another Manchester United player, if I'm not mistaken, is David Mahon here. So again, this kind of feeds into that idea they are bringing players from, you know, clubs, so Mahon and Wolverden, both Manchester United players, both used to playing alongside each other in the final third. I do like David here. He is a good player, but when you compare him to Dylan Turnbull, and I know someone's going to accuse me of bias, if we just compare him to Turnbull, I personally... I think, I think I'd take Dylan Turnbull over him. I just prefer the, the little bit of extra pace, the little bit of extra aggression. I guess when you look here, you see free kicks, tackling, just a few things, corners and crossing. They're not really as important to me as some of these other areas. In truth, there's not a great deal between them, but considering Dylan Turnbull was the second top goal scorer in the Premier League, it's hard to justify not playing him. And of course, we've got Norman as well. And actually, when I look at this here, Norman Turnbull, the wrong way round. Let's sort that out. Norman... He's done very well for England so far. As I've mentioned right at the top of this episode, he is improving a lot as well. Uh, and whilst it might look a bit like bias, I genuinely believe that these are our two best striking options, you know, for this World Cup. Anyway, there's a few other players in this team that we've not talked about. Players like Finn Smith, uh, a player who has been battling a little bit of injury prior to this competition. He's had three minor injuries in the last month and a bit. A player who I did actually look at signing once upon a time, but his injury proneness threw me off. Nevertheless, he's a very good option off the bench. He can play left back and right back, which is versatility we like. Great physicals, great speed, can play higher up the pitch. If he's playing higher up the pitch, we are in deep, deep trouble. Uh, Adam Buckley, 
the centre back position is where we lack strength, really. Um, obviously, Rice is great. Adam Buckley here, he's not great, is he? But we don't have the centre back options. And unlike club level, I can't go out and find the next Wonder Kid. We have to deal with what we've got. Now, Anne Kenny was a player who I was at once upon a time quite keen on. In fact, when I first came to the England position, he was 29 years old. And at that point, I was very much on board with giving this guy time, but you can see here, he was signed by Chelsea for £60 million, and he's not had the best of two seasons, really. Granted, in the last half a season, he played a little bit better, averaged a 7.27 last year, but only played 18 of Chelsea's 38 league games, so certainly not a first-team regular. And when you look at him, he's not the most dazzling of players, I suppose. He's a good little ball player. But no better than the other options we've got in the team. So the defence is definitely where we're lacking. In the centre-back, obviously, we've got Brennan, who is solid. He's uh, one of Chelsea's big players. A player who's been keeping Noah Kenny out of the team a fair bit and has put in some good performances. I think, actually, today we are going to take Declan Rice over Brennan in the ball-playing defender position. This has been one of the more common setups I've gone with, is Rice alongside Lemmer. Whilst Rice is not a natural centre-back, you can see here he's just such a great player on the ball. And considering the system that we play, considering we play with ball playing defenders, he's pretty well suited to it. And this is the team that's done things so far for us. If we just have a little overview, I suppose, of the World Cup, um, you can see here we enter in the second knockout round. Um, things are a little bit weird. If you're not familiar, the World Cup format is changing, um, or at least it was planned to be changed. I have a weird feeling it may have been postponed, but in the future, be that next World Cup or the World Cup after, FIFA already are enacting plans to switch the format to have more teams at the World Cup across way more groups, but instead of it being groups of four, there are groups of three. Um, which brings us on to how we've got to this game against Australia, because we were drawn against Iran and Honduras, and with respect to both those nations, they're nations that we should be beating convincingly, and well, they were teams we beat convincingly. The first game against Iran, less than a minute gone when Watson, our deep line playmaker, come set piece specialist, scored from a free kick. Not long after that, Walker got himself a really, really powerful headed finish. We made a few change in the changes in this game. Foden got a goal on off the bench from the penalty spot, and late on, Walker added his second goal of the World Cup to ensure a 4-0 win. A great way to start the competition, and immediately, just a couple of days later, we had Honduras, where... You can see the match stats in the bottom left. We were very nearly FM'd, but a late goal, goal by Ali Hall, um, the PSG youngster. I say youngster, he's 27. I mean, my manager's 50 years old, so I guess he is technically a youngster. Firing it into the bottom corner. He saved our faces in this game. We were really, really not very good. Um, massive, massive relief. I have to thank him a lot for his commitment and his performance there. Ultimately... We navigated these two games, keeping two clean sheets, and finished top of our group, which has meant that we are now in this second round situation that you find ourselves in. So anyway, a look to the present. As I said, we are going to be taking on Australia, and the winner of this game takes on the winner of Scotland v France, which will be tomorrow's match if we win here. I, I don't want to get carried away. I've seen stranger things happen than England lose to Australia in major competitions in my lifetime as an England fan. So I'm not taking any chances today. The good news is we've actually had quite a long break. I think to do with the way the groups were drawn and the fact we were Group I, our games were played a little bit late on. Additionally, we played our first two group games back to back and then the third game of the group stage was played between Honduras and Iran. So we had an even more rest time. So hopefully that's going to play in our favour. Um, you know, on the whole, um, I feel like that, maybe, maybe that puts us in a good position. I don't want to get too carried away with everything, you know, we've, we've been, we've, been, we've not been convincing, I suppose. When you look at the one new one, that's not convincing, is it? If we just look at the team stats, obviously, they're massively skewed because, um, well, we've not played as many games as anyone else. But Italy leading the goal-scoring way, Australia have the best shooting accuracy. And I mean, if we just look at how they've got to this point, let's, let's take a quick peek at you, shall we, Australia? How did you get here, Socceroos? So they actually lost to Brazil 3-0, but then beat Wales 2-0. So fair play to them. They've gone grinding on through. They've already taken out one of the home nations, although it was only four days ago. So we do have those fresh legs, and it's drizzly weather that we're adapted for this. We've developed the English. We've evolved a species for drizzle, so this is this is going to go in our favour. I'm absolutely confident in that. Anyway, you can see a few other games going on. Good luck to Iran. Our team 
mates from the group. I don't mean they're technically teammates really, but they were in the same group as us, so I, I see them as friends. And uh, Scotland and France going to be that other game that we're going to be keeping an eye on as the winner of that plays the winner of our game here. Anyway, I'm just weighing up if I want to make any last minute changes. But you know what? I think this is the team I want to go with. We're going to give, obviously, continued opportunities to the likes of Lemma. Hall was a hero on off the bench last game. Give him another chance to prove his worth. And Turnbull and Norman, the Towel or Town kids. Can they do it on the world stage? Can Turnbull do it against Australia? I'm sure his mother, who is Australian, is going to be sat in the crowd with very conflicted emotions as her, as her son takes on our home nation. Well, hopefully they're going to get the result for us today. Norman and his headband, Sancho and Declan Rice, the only two real players left in this team, this ageing England dynasty. Can, can we lift a World Cup? It all begins here. This is where things are going to get super, super serious. And the players need to warm up. I'll join you in a second. Oh, I don't know if I... I it's weird, right? I, I thought I'd go into this game and not really care, but I'm almost as nervous for this game as I am the Champions League final. That might seem absolutely mad to say, but I don't know. There's something special about the World Cup. Champions Leagues, they come around every year. The World Cup, as England manager, I mean, it, it comes around once every four years, and usually after it, you're just sacked immediately. Let's hope that we can get off to our strongest showing. Um, I know some people have asked in the comments, not just of this episode, I'm now anticipating the questions, but people asking, you know, are you going to stay as England manager after this World Cup? And the honest answer is, I don't really know. I don't really have a plan here. Um, I think if we win it, we have to stay on. If we get to the final, we'll see. Who knows? Maybe over the course of the next four or five rounds, as of course we maraud on to a final, we will develop some newfound emotional attachment to the players. Anyway, Sancho to Fry, who's doing a 360 to Turnbull. And Dylan Turnbull is taken in five minutes. His mother is still probably conflicted in the crowd about whether or not she should support her home nation or her son's nation. What I'm not conflicted about is my emotions. We are going to go through. I'm confident. I believe. I may be a... What, what is it Australians call English people? Is it POM? POMs? Like prisoner of mother England? Is it that? I can't remember. There's like a, a name that Australians call English people. I'm proud to be a POM. We're going to do you. I say that and now they're on the attack. Also, we're going to do you is almost one of the most English threats I've ever heard. I'm unleashing my inner gangster as Lee nearly scores, right? Jack, calm down. If you can't tell, I'm quite excited about the World Cup today. My commentary is all over the place, but after yesterday's action, how the hell was I meant to be cool, calm and collected for this? The answer is, I couldn't possibly be. Anyway, I just remembered, are we still on extended highlights? We're not. Excellent. Of course we're on key. We played the group stage. I was worried we were going to be watching another Champions League final that lasts 25 minutes. Anyway, Watson down this right-hand side, whips it to Ali Hall. He got one goal already. That's that's why we've started him. That is why we've started him. He is more of an attacking midfielder, but for England, he slots in as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And when I, ca when I came in, people compared Watson and Hall. They compared them to Lampard and Gerrard. How did you play them alongside each other and get the most out of them? This is our What a finish that is by Ali Hall. We do look fresh. We do look hungry coming into this game as well, which is great to see. Lemmer's picked up a book in Ryan. Don't don't do it, Ryan. I've bigged you up as one of my own, like a, like a second son to me. But my first son, of course, being Andrei Shvetsov. Oh, and my, my my second son being Sonny Best. Although he's more of an uncle, I suppose. They're on the attack here, though. Menere bringing it forward. One tackle by Fry. Can you do it again? Leela's in the crowd, mate. You've got to do it here. And, well, John. Big John in goal. Huge stop by the keeper. Made one great save then. Did really well to hold on to it, actually, because Australia had committed men into the box and they were sniffing around for any half chance. Anyway, Stevie Norman to Turner. What can he do? He goes to Watson. One assist to his name already. Back to Hall. Have a go again, Ali. He goes wide to Fry. He's got more intelligence than I have on the ball. Fry hits it. Oh, my word, Ryan Fry. He bangs in goals for Chelsea for fun from left back. He's now banging them in for, for England for fun. And suddenly this game is almost looking more straightforward than the games against Honduras and Iran. I mean, can we play you every week? Sancho getting an assist, which is lovely to see. I'm just wondering, actually, now that we're three goals up after half an hour, 
is it mad for me to consider taking off Greg, Greg, Greg Watson, one of our star players, and just resting him? You know what? It might be a little unprecedented. I am going to take off Watson, and I am going to take off Ashley Walker. Two of our star players, but they are two of the players who have had the longest seasons here. This may go down as one of the worst decisions I've ever made. It may go down as one of the best decisions I've ever made if they are fitter for the latter stages. But three goals up after 30 minutes, I feel like that saved the legs of our best players. Why not? Norman, bringing the ball forward here, pulls it back to Walker. He'll probably want the fourth before he goes off. Watson hits it. I mean, Greg, get off the pitch, mate. You've done your business. You've got an assist. You've got a goal. It's not even half an hour gone, and we can pack up our bags and start going home. Norman with the assist as well. Tau the Town Hall Faithful not getting on the score sheet just yet in this 4-0, but they, they've turned providers here. Lovely finish by Watson as well. Tucks it into the bottom corner. And the game is going to go, are you sure you want to make these changes? Yes, I absolutely blooming am. Make those changes. Get our two star players off. Phil Foden, Jude Bellingham, some experience on the pitch. Declan Rice has hit the woodwork twice, three times, four times. Did that actually hit the woodwork four times? No, it only counted once. I have seen the ball repeatedly bounce on the crossbar before and it go up to like 13 or 14. I was getting very excited. It was going to happen again. Anyway, Hall, goal scorer of our second, if I'm not mistaken, whipping in Bellingham back post. Where where was this in the group stage? Gen genuine quit. Where was this, boys? I thought, you know, we'll play through the group stage. We'll get to the Australia game. They are one of our big rivals. You know, there's a bit there's a bit of a, a relationship, a dynamic there between England and Australia. We might be on the opposite sides of the world, but we, we don't love each other as nations. It's like a brotherly love. There's, there's an underlying hatred and competitiveness there. But I thought they were going to give us a bit more competitiveness than this. Fry whips in. Norman hits the woodwork and can't get the rebound. I mean, at this point, are we on course for the biggest World Cup win in history? What is that? I'm going to... World Cup biggest win. What is the biggest win ever at a World Cup? Um, it's happened three times. 9-0. South Korea... Um, Lost to Hungary 9-0. Yugoslavia beat Zaire 9-0. And Hungary beat El Salvador 10-1. So we need a 10-0, boys. Can you do it for us? Who you, who knew an episode of Park to Prem could be so educational? Turner skips past his man. Options in the middle. Dylan Turnbull. I mean, the worst thing is we probably would be six or seven goals up if we weren't operating as a Make-A-Wish Foundation for Towel or Strikers. Fry, what? He has the strongest neck muscles in the world. Allegedly a relative of a giraffe. Did anyone else see that header he just did backwards? Anyway, I'm bigging up a header going backwards. Let's big up this run going forwards. Turner sticks up. Turnbull, Norman blocked away. Turnbull, though, wins it. Norman, hit that. You've got to score one of these, boys. Between you. Between you. We've had three clear-cut chances, three half chances, and it's only 5-0. Phil Foden, what can you do, Phil? Show me your worth. Whips in Turnbull. There we go. There we go. It's 6-0. Who, who is Australia's key player? How how good are... Oh, let's just have a look. Value. Their, their most value, valuable player is only 3.7 million. He's not a bad player, though, is he? Really? Have they got anyone else who's good? Daniel Austin. I mean... Yeah, I can... Mm, he's got four jumping reach... And he's 171 centimetres tall at centre-back. I mean, no wonder Turnbull's having a field today. I actually thought Australia were a little bit better than this. I thought they'd have, you know, the Mark Viduka regen, the Harry Kuehl regen. None of that. None of that at all. Dylan Turnbull, take a bow. Maybe maybe Dylan Turnbull is the Mark Viduka regen. My word. It's 6-0 at the break. I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. I've just told the players I'm not happy. They are they're, they're confused and... Uh, confused and demotivated and happy and seemed to lose confidence, right? I'm going to tell them I'm, I was impressed. Look, we saved it, everyone. Now they're just confused. Except the defence are, like, crying. Oh, dear. Well, let's hope they don't go to the press afterwards. I mean, the press are going to be praising me anyway. I could say anything to them at half-time. Look at this. One assist for five of our outfield players. We're just, you know, giving everyone an assist. Jaden Sancho, what can you do? He hits it. Oh, my word. That nearly crept in. King had to turn that over the post. Might have been going wide. Maybe a bit of a save for the cameras. 
but whipped in Norman. What can you do? The fact we've taken off our three star, well, no, our two star players, and when I say two star players, I don't mean they have two stars. I mean our star players. There's two of them. We've taken them both off after half an hour. Continue to score another three. I mean, I am going to get a bit shouty shouty. You may have also noticed I have switched to very attacking. I want 10 nil, lads. I want 10 nil. I want the record. Norman, finish that. Ah, we had 41 shots after an hour. In a weird way, it's lovely to see the old Tao formation coming back. The 4-2-2-2 the that got us relegated, but did also score us the most goals during our time at the club. It's not a very good formation against teams of equal strength, but you know what? On the international stage, there aren't many teams that can deal with our firepower, and I quite enjoy watching just the mad attacking football that it brings. Sancho, going back to Declan Rice. There he is. Making his 174th appearance for England. That is quite some record. Bellingham got Turner on the overlap. Might just go on his own. Does go to Turner eventually. He whips in. Hall's there. Turnbull, Hall, Sancho. What a lovely goal. What The little one-touch passing there. Completely overplayed. Completely unnecessary. I was almost willing Turnbull just to hit it and just shoot himself. But we've, we've worked it around nicely. And it's 7-0. Three more, boys. Three more. We can do this. I want the record. Now, there is a chance the record has already been beaten, and I don't know it, but historically, outside of this save game, a nine-goal win is the, the, the barrier to smash through. Can we smash through it? Foden, bringing it forward. Plays it to Ali Hall, who got fouled from behind. Referee. Bellingham, wide to Fry. Fry can hit them. Fry can, it's deflected in. Is that gone off their player or ours? It's gone off their defender. I feel like Turnbull deserves some, some of the praise for just pressuring the defender into being in the right spot. Fry's decided he's had, he's had enough of scoring his own, you know, little regular bangers as a left wing back. Instead, he's gonna he's gonna go for pinball shots. I mean, I feel bad for the keeper. By all accounts, there he didn't really have much of a chance. It's eight nil. Two more goals, boys. Two more. Right. Let's wing backs. Turner. Attack, Fry, attack, Sancho, attack, Bellingham, attack. We've got a sub if we want to make it, but everyone's playing so well. I'll tell you what, Norman's not scored. Norman, get off the pitch. Although David Mahon's coming back from injury. David, get on the pitch, my friend. Bit of match fitness for you. Norman, you've let me down today, mate. We're bringing on an injured player. That's how badly you've done. I do feel a little bad for their goalkeeper, who's on a 4.8. The the. If there's, I was about to say the good news. I don't know if he's going to see it as good news. But the silver lining as we celebrate for Australia is the fact that they haven't gone down in the record books as having the biggest defeat in World Cup history. Only 8-0. I've never seen such heartbroken body language. Did anyone see that? The Australian players look broken. and Well, they're broken they certainly are. If not emotionally, just physically after that result. Turnbull picked up man of the match, by the way, worth noting. So, no bias here. Well played, Dylan. Well played. We salute him. He held no sentiment towards his second nation. He decided he wanted to hammer them. Turnbull's delighted. Dylan, I'm delighted with you, mate. I'm delighted. Makes me emotional to see him doing so well. Of course, a product of our academy, now tearing it up for England at a World Cup. Now, the big question is, and it is a big question... Will we get France? Now, I, I don't want to say the game's scripted because I genuinely don't believe Football Manager is scripted, but we will play Scotland or France. All I'm going to say is that the last England manager was sacked when they lost to France at the Euros two years ago. They lost 3-1 on that occasion. Heartbreaking, you know, devastating. In our first little run as England manager, we couldn't beat France in the Nations League, but we used that as a chance to experiment, to bring in some of the youngsters it was. Less competitive, a little less serious, perhaps. But now, history repeats itself, because two years on, I have to play the team, potentially, that got my predecessor sacked. And that is a little bit scary. France are very, very good. Just to have a look at France, if we just have a peek here, they are fifth in the world rankings. By comparison, we are second. They're good. They're scary. They're a bit like the big bad wolf. 
What I would really love is for Scotland to beat them. Scotland, do the miracle for us. Do me a favour. Do do. I, I really don't want to play France. I I I'm I'm scared to play France. I'm scared to play France. That's all I'm going to say. Andre playing a little bit for Brazil, not playing a great deal. Soretta, 90 minutes for Brazil. One goal and one assist. Just a, just a little teaser for you. Might have had to give him a new contract. And you might be able to tell that's quite a lot of money in terms of wages. And that might well be a trend emerging here at Tau Law. In terms of, yeah, um, salary demands. They, they've gone up a little. But we'll talk more about that at the start of next year. France have won. Scotland got a last-minute goal. It wasn't enough. Berger has been sent off for them. He's... Pretty blooming good is uh, Antonin Berger. Um, Cherky, who's a real player who plays for Leon, I believe, in real life. Maybe, yeah, he does play for Leon in real life. Um, good play, got two goals for the France team, so they're going to be a little bit scary. And that now suddenly becomes a pretty big third round draw. This is the third round, to be clear. There, this isn't even the quarterfinals with this new World Cup format. We've still got a quarterfinal, a semi final, and then a final to win. And in this round, we've been drawn against the world number fives. I mean, that, if that isn't the game of death in this whole run, I don't know what is. And I feel like we've set this all up so perfectly for tomorrow's episode. I am scared. I don't want to get sacked as England manager, but if we lose this game, we undoubtedly will. We have high hopes on our shoulders. that the, the, They want us to win a World Cup, and I want to win a World Cup for England. Even if it is the Mike Bassett way and playing 4-4-2. Four days to recover, four days to prepare ourselves. Next episode, we will do that France game. And if we advance, I imagine we will also do the game following it, which obviously at this point, we don't know who that's going to be. And then if we can win that game, then the semi-final and final will be a separate episode in three days' time, if that makes sense. So two more episodes at the most, or it could all go horribly wrong tomorrow. I do hope you've enjoyed the international episode here today. I know it's not for everyone. I like to make this a little bit more loose, a little bit more rambly. It's kind of a bit of a more lighter look, I guess, on management in Football Manager. A bit more about having fun as well, particularly with the towel or faithful up front. But it has gone surprisingly well, considering how not particularly seriously I was taking it, which... I guess it's a plus in many ways. So yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Drop a like on today's video if you have enjoyed. Give me a score prediction for the game against France. I would love to see them down in the comments. And other than that, it is me, Jack. See you soon. I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>